Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day. We will be talking about the four-year series. However, how can I leave out the tailor, right? So let's talk about this again. Remember, the goal is to write a function as a power series. And this right here is just like an infinite polynomial. And look at this right here. We have the x minus a to pass the whole numbers. And this is how you can look at it. You can just think about this right here. They are like the building blocks for that function. Maybe on the left-hand side, you have e to the x. Well, you are going to have this right here as your building blocks, along with the coefficients, namely the CNs. And to figure the CNs out, well, thanks to Taylor, which I showed you in the previous video, we have this formula for that. And whenever you use this formula to figure out the power series for f of x, we are going to be respectful. We will call this the Taylor series. That's all. Now, let's talk about what Fourier series is. First of all, this right here is just the name of a person, just like Taylor. So nothing too fancy, it's just the name of a person, right? And the goal right here, it's pretty similar. We want to write a function into something else as well. But this time, we will actually like to write f of x as a trig series. So it's not a polynomial. Like earlier, this right here is like a polynomial. But this time, we'll be using sine cosine to help us out. Namely, it's like a trig series. Why do we use sine cosine? Well, because they are periodic, and in a lot of in a lot of situations, you know, a lot of things keep repeating. So, it might be a good idea to have sine cosine as the building blocks. And here is the general form: we will have a zero, and then next is a one times. Let's write down the cosines first: cosine of one x, and then next we have a two, cosine of two x, and then next we have a three cosine of 3x, and so on, so on, so on. This time though, as you can see, we have the cosine of 1x, cosine of 2x, cosine of 3x, and so on. These right here are our building blocks. Well, not yet. We also need to have the signs to help us out. Here, for the signs, in fact, you don't have b0. Why? Because this a0 is like saying a0 times cosine of 0 times x. Cosine of 0 times x is cosine of 0, which is 1, which is just a0. b0 times sine of 0 times x, sine of 0 times x is just 0, which is o0 anyway. So you don't have the b0. So you start with b1 times sine of 1x, and yes, you just pretty much keep on going. b2 times sine of 2x, and then plus b3, sine of 3x, and so on, so on, so on. So as you can see, this is a trick series. And thanks to Fourier, we'll figure out the formulas for the A0, the ANs, and also the BNs. After all that, we will respectfully call this the Fourier series. All right, now let's see. First of all, this is a lot to write. So let's put this in the summation form. And you see that we have the AN by itself, so the, I mean a0 on the outside, right, a0. All this right here, I will just write this as the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, and then the coefficients are the an, and then the building blocks are cosine, and then we have n times x. So it's just like that. Now for the signs, is this right here, and this is just like we add the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, bn times sine of n x like this. So this right here it's a pretty scary looking expression. <laughs> it's actually not that bad though. And another small remark is that because the summations are pretty much the same, so you can actually put this and that together in one summation, that's fine. But anyway, uh, this is what we have. First of all, let's go ahead and figure out formula for AC row. Well Look back to the Taylor series. This right here, the Taylor formula. We differentiate it, huh? If you differentiate this equation, well, the derivative is just zero, so you cannot figure it out. In fact, the derivative is not going to be helped because when you differentiate cosine, you get negative sine, and so on, right? No. Maybe you guessed it. Yes. Instead of doing differentiations, unlike the Taylor series right here, we will actually be doing integrations to figure out the ANs and also the BNs. And here is the deal. 
as I mentioned it, sine cosines, they are periodic. So first of all, we want to define an interval with length 2 pi, and we want to just you know, integrate over that interval. So I will just write this down right here for you guys. Perhaps we can choose an interval, and it's pretty easy to work with from negative pi to pi. You can also do the following computation from 0 to 2 pi, up to you. This is good because 0 is right in the middle, so why not? OK, so first of all, what we would like to do is, let me just look at this equation and integrate each and every one from, zero, from, from, sorry, from negative pi to pi, and hope for the best. It will be the best, you'll see. So let me just write this down right here for you guys. First of all, on the left-hand side, we have f of x. And as I said it, we are going to integrate this from negative pi to pi. And I'm going to leave a space here. You guys will see why. So I will have the dx right here. And this is equal to, I will also integrate this from negative pi to pi. And this is a naught, or a zero, up to you, however you want to say it. Leave a space right here. This right here, don't forget this right here is just a bunch of the addings right here, right? When you integrate this, you can just integrate this term by term under the assumption that this right here converges. And of course, it has to converge in order to, for the following to work. So what we are going to do is we will just add. And instead of putting the integral here, we can actually put the integral here because it's just like we're adding the integrals. So we have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity integrating it from negative pi to pi of this expression, which is a n cosine of n x. And leave a little space, you guys will see why, and then put a dx. Same thing here, so we are going to add the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. I'm just integrating this term by term, so we'll have to integrate this from negative pi to pi. And we have b n sine of n x leave a space, and then put a dx right here. OK, so let's see. Uh, let's figure things out. Well, if you have a function, this right here is, you know, you have to go to work it out. So that's there. Let's see. This right here is just a constant. If you integrate this, you get a naught times x. And if you go from negative pi to pi, this right here is actually really easy, because the answer is just 2 pi times a naught, or a zero, right? So you can just work that out, it's not that bad at all. And now let's look at this. Well, a n in the x word is just a, it's just, just a constant, so you can ignore that. Let's focus on the integral. So let me just put a note right here. The integral from negative pi to pi cosine of an x dx. And let's do this real quick. Well. Cosine of an x inside, when you integrate that, you get positive sine of an x. And don't forget the Chandu, the derivative of an x is n, but you are integrating, so you have to divide it by that, so it's 1 over n right here. And then you are going from negative pi to pi, and you just do the usual thing. You have the 1 over n sine of n, put the pi here, so you have n pi here. And then you are going to subtract 1 over n sine of n, and then put the negative pi here. Hold that. Well, you remember, n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, namely positive whole numbers. So when you have sine of n pi, in fact, this is just 0. Why? Because sine of 1 pi is 0, sine of 2 pi is 0, sine of 3 pi is 0, and so on. This is 0, and this right here is also 0. Therefore, all this right here is just 0. In another word, all this right here is just 0. Cool, huh? So this is gone. Now, this right here, if you integrate, just focus on negative pi to pi of just the sine of an x, like this. This right here, it's also 0. Why? Because sine is an odd function. And when you integrate an odd function from negative to pi to pi, this is going to be 0. So this right here is just a bunch of zeros, right? So in another word, all these two are gone. You have this, it's equal to 2 pi times a naught. We can just divide 2 pi on both sides. So the first little formula right here is a naught equals 1 over 2 pi 
times the integral. <laughs> Hold that. <laughs> times the integral from negative pi to pi of whatever the function is dx. This is the first piece of the formula that we have. So this right here is pretty cool, huh? Now, um, one of those three things done. <laughs> we still have to figure out the ans and also the bns. You see, the ans and bns earlier they didn't matter because you know the integral part they were zero. So now this time, we cannot just integrate this. We actually have to introduce something else to help us out. Huh? So what can we do? Hmm. Okay. I'd like to tell you guys this. In an integral, sine, cosine, they get along with each other really well, right? So I want to have maybe the cosine to help us out. Let's see. So when you look at this, not only we are going to integrate this from negative pi to pi, but before that, we actually have to multiply everybody here by a new function. And it's not that new, it's just cosine of something, right? But if you just simply multiply by cosine, it's not going to work. So actually, I will tell you, we will have to multiply everybody by cosine of mx. What's m though? m is just a positive default number. So I'll just write down m is belonging to the positive default number. So yeah. So you can just write cosine of mx here. And then this right here, you also have to multiply by cosine of mx. And you might be wondering, like, how do I know to multiply by cosine of mx? I don't. Four year did, so ask him, don't ask me. <laughs> anyway, here is what we will do. This right here, let me just write it down better for you guys. Yeah, this is a naught times cosine of mx, and then here is the dx. That's why I left the space. All right, let's see. This right here, once again, is to be done, right? So I'll leave that. This right here, it's, if you just ignore the constant a naught, when you integrate from negative pi to pi of cosine of mx, that's the integral that we did earlier for the cosine of nx from negative pi to pi. So don't let the m will unbother you. In fact, this right here will give you zero, just like earlier, right? Now, we have to figure this out. Well, leave the a n right here, okay? So I'll just focus on this integral. So I will just write this down. We are going to examine negative pi to pi cosine of nx times cosine of mx dx. So these two right here, hmm, sometimes maybe the m can be the same as n, huh? so be careful with that. So we'll have two situations to consider. What if the n and m are the same, and what if they are different? Well, well, you can just work this out on your own. In fact, I would like to tell you the following, right? This right here, I will just do a separate video because otherwise this video will be over like, it will, it will be overly long. So work this out. You can use the angle sum formula or whatsoever, whatever you, will, you prefer. But I will tell you, if n and m are different, the result of this integral will be zero. So let me just write this down. If n is not equal to m. And if n and m, they happen to be the same, the result right here will be nicely equal to pi. I'll just write this down. If n is equal to m, right? So this right here is actually really, really great. And what do I mean by that? Well, if n and n, n and m are the same, this integral becomes just pi. So let's see. If you just focus on integral part, the whole thing here, let's see. Well, we have a n, right? It's technically a m because if when you have n is equal to one, n is equal to two, and so on, if n happens to be the same as m, so that's why it's a m. Right? So that's the constant multiple. And then for the integral part, you end up with pi. So it's a m times pi. Right? So this right here will be just all that. And it's, it's just one term because that's the only one situation that you end up with a number besides zero. The other terms are just zeros. So this is when n is equal to m, you have this result. So that's very nice. Now, let's talk about this right here. Well, 
Let's focus on the integral of sine of nx times cosine of mx. In fact, sine is odd, cosine is even. An even function times an odd function, when you work this out, you can verify this on, on your own again, you actually still end up with an odd function. And when you integrate this from negative pi to pi, guess what? Everybody will be zero. So that's very nice. Perhaps I'll put on a happy face. Happy zero. Likewise, this right here is also a happy zero. So what are we talking about then? This time, on the left hand side, this is the integral that we have to do. And then on the right hand side, we actually only end up with am times pi. Am times pi. This is the subscript m, right? And of course, we can just now divide it by pi on both sides. That's pretty much it. But usually, we don't write m. We still use n. So we are going to replace the m by n again. So another thing that we know right now is a n equals, once again, we're just fixing the index right here. I will divide the pi here. So we have 1 over pi, the integral from negative pi to pi. And we will have to integrate. We will have to integrate this, right? So it's cosine, it's f of x times, and because I'm using n right here, right? I'm using n, so I'll also replace the m by n. So we multiply by cosine of nx, like that. So once again, this right here had n, likewise with this m, but let me just replace the m with n. So this is the second formula that we have. Cool, huh? Now, one more thing and then we'll be done. We'll have to figure out the bns. Earlier, I multiplied everything by cosine of mx. Take a guess, what are we going to do this time? Now you raise the board, you guys can take a guess. What's the best friend of cosine? Right, who is the best friend of cosine? Yes, it's sine. So instead of multiplying everybody by cosine of mx, we will be multiplying everybody by sine of mx. And once again, m is just positive whole numbers. So a positive whole number. And this right here is sine of mx. And right here, this is going to be sine of mx. And then this right here, it's going to be sine of, not simp, sine of mx. This right here is to be done. So leave that. This right here, thank God, this is an odd function times a now, which is still odd. This right here, gives us the happy zero. And maybe let's make it happier. This right here, just focus on the integration, cosine times sine. Yes, it's odd, isn't it? So you get zero. So same thing, huh? Now, sine of nx times sine of mx. Well, we are going to focus on that integral. So let me just write this down, the negative pi to pi so integral. Right, this is sine of nx times sine of mx dx. Let me tell you, it's really similar to the other situation that we had. We have two possibilities, 0 or pi. If n and m are different, you get 0 for the whole integral. So this is when n is not equal to m. And when they do happen to equal to each other, the result of this integral is nicely equal to pi. Aha. So for this part right here, n goes from 1 to infinity, so somewhere it's going to hit m. And we'll just have b m here times the integral part. Let me just write this down. b m should be in red, just like earlier. And then the integral part, the integral of all that, it's going to be pi. Yeah. So, look at this, we have this integral, and the uh, inside is with the sine of mx. Here we have the bm, replace the m with n again. So, I will tell you, bn is equal to 1 over pi, still integrate this from negative pi to pi of the function f of x, and you have to multiply by sine of nx, like this. So these are the three main ingredients for the four-year series. Whew, feels so good, isn't it? Come on next, let's find the four-year series of e to the x.
But at the moment, this is it. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you guys have any questions. And if you guys are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. And as always, that's it. I will make this closer so you guys can see it. Yeah. Bye.